Hello DjangoCon Sprinters! I'm Thibaut. I'm about to start reviewing the PyCon Lithuania website. Kindly submitted for review by Rin. Thank you Rin for sending this my way. I'm going to be reviewing it for accessibility issues. As far as I know, the website is a single page, so it should be pretty fast for us to go through this together. Um, I don't know what it's built with, I think it's a static site, so it should be quite interesting potentially for us to look at the source of the site as well as the actual uh, front end of it. I put together a very quick list of things I wanted to test on the site. So first off, automated tests with the Accessibility Insights extension, which bundles um, a checker called Axe. Uh, then some keyboard navigation checks, color contrast, mobile support, and finally spending time on the site with a screen reader. Um, so I'll just get going and yeah, this, this video, I'm recording this for the purpose of just having a record of what I'm testing. Um, and uh, so that when I actually submit issues on the repository of the project, I have some screenshots and just recordings of me actually trying out the site. Yes, so it looks like it's all in in, uh, in GitHub uh, as a static site. You can find the HTML for it right there. And I, uh, sorry, the CSS, and I assume the HTML in the, is in this one file. Okay, it doesn't look like there is any kind of static site generator, which means it should be pretty straightforward for us to refer back and forth to uh, the rendering of the site and the source to identify specific issues. I might try for a change actually to copy this whole source and uh, try it out on the online HTML file validator. Um, it's always a, an interesting exercise. I might just try it from the live version um, because I'm not sure how good of a rep HTML validation has these days, but it does help you find some issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, char set is a bit too far in the dark. That's not really an accessibility issue, but worth looking into nonetheless. Some disallowed attributes. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure what an href does on an h1, probably nothing. Uh, there might be some invalid HTML around here, or maybe there in this a tag. Unclosed ul, stray and tag ul and tag divs in stray and tag footer. Hmm. So it does feel like there is quite a bit of HTML issues in the document, starting with this h1 that has an href on it. That probably is uh, not intentional in any way. Um, so these, they might not be a big of a deal at all, or they might completely break the site in some obscure ways. There is actually um, a WCAG success criterion for parsing of the page that does mandate sites are meant to be valid HTML. So in particular, having complete start and end tags. Sometimes screen readers can gloss over those details just fine. Um, sometimes they, they do break pretty hard. So there is a closing form element here and a closing p that aren't matched with anything else it seems. I imagine since this isn't built as a static site they might have just uh, made mistakes over time while editing the doc manually and it might just be that uh, things lost their matching closing or opening tags. Yeah, it looks like that's what happened. Um, so probably not not the biggest deal, but definitely worth fixing and that's why I also always look at the HTML first It's just much much clearer where the issues are coming from if you can look at the source um, All right, um, so we'll look at look through this a bit more top to bottom title well, It seems like an excellent title which is very important for screen users Usage of the lang tag, that's the attribute that's very important as well. I don't think the XML lang attribute does anything these days, but maybe it doesn't, I'm not aware of it. Um, some metadata, I won't review this too much myself. Google Tag Manager, uh, viewports with device width initial scale equals one. Okay, the only thing I'm looking for in here is, does this disable zooming? 
so that's a bad thing if it if it leaves to being possible that's uh, that's great because it allows people on on mobile devices to stretch the page back and forth and then on to the content so we have a nav region seems quite appropriate that's good uh, we have an a tag hmm not quite sure what point there would be in having a um, um, an href with um, uh, without any any fragment identifier here that's just going to create a link that does nothing and might be confusing to users. Um, this looks like the conference logo potentially. Uh, this shouldn't say favicon in the alt text. Um, whenever the alt text is announced for an image, it all already starts by saying image as the first thing and people don't really care um, what type of icon it is. In this case, I don't think it matters too much what the visual of the icon is. I think it really is very much decorative compared to the label next to it. So I probably would suggest using alt equals empty string just so that this is completely bypassed for screen reader users. Um, unless we do want this link to stay, but the link does nothing currently, so debatable. H1 looks fine. I'm not quite sure whether it has its place in the nav area. I feel like this text right here in the contents part of the page should be the H1. It's much more visually prominent. And if people use the H1 to navigate the page, they would be most likely to want to jump further down the page rather than at the beginning of the nav. So I'd probably suggest not using an H1 in, uh, in the nav or header areas like this. And we have a button that has some semantic markup. Um, okay, so there is some navigation that's toggleable. So just so you know, um, yeah, area label looks great, area expanded looks great. Area controls, um, I don't think any screen reader actually supports it these days, apart from maybe JAWS. So this actually doesn't, isn't announced in any way by those tools, so you probably don't need to do this. Uh, it's a bit of a red herring when I see this, whether people realize that this does nothing, essentially. Mm, there is an icon, and yeah, there is labels. So that's quite that's quite good. Um, can I see this icon? So I imagine this might be the mobile toggle navigation. Might try that a bit later. So this is, I imagine, the collapsible navigation panel. Um, UL, LI, hmm, this A tag has no href. That's oh, okay, it's disabled. Hmm. Uh, we'll look we'll look at this a bit a bit later um, when we actually review the page for from a user's perspective. Um, link to home, that's just an href. Okay, uh, okay, I suppose if it's a single page current. Um, if this is meant to say that you're on, you're on this page currently, you can use the area current equals page attribute rather than, than this, uh, which has the added benefit that it's, just, uh, it's announced consistently throughout all of the sites on the internet. And it's also, um, since it's announced directly by the um, text-to-speech engine, it will be announced in the correct language for the user. Um, I know the site is English only in this case, but generally you do prefer to not have too many translate strings like this. Um, about participate, that seems fine. Cover image, first slide, okay. That feels like it's probably not a correct alt text for anything that is um, semantic. You probably want to describe the contents of the slide rather than the fact that it's the first. But we look at this on the actual site a bit more. Um, list of sponsors in an H2. Seems like a good call. You could consider making this um, a section um, element with an area labeled by pointing at the ID of the H2, just so that there is a, a way for screen reader users to bypass this block should they want to or move straight to it. Probably not that big of a deal for such a small um, part of the site, but just FYI. Um, yeah, so similarly here, I see that the alt text for this image is Oxylabs logo whereas I presume the image would only say Oxylabs and nothing else. Uh, so in this case, 
if the image has text like this you the the by far the go to rule is to have exactly the text that's on the image as the alt text no one cares that it's the oxylabs logo all we care is that one of the sponsors is oxylabs so it would be much nicer if this was just announced as image oxylabs most likely the same for pretalks and python anywhere this will again be all announced as image anyway just by the screen reader so there is no point in repeating that it's an image or a logo or an icon or whatever uh, become a sponsor another link that doesn't have an href so it's a bit odd but we'll look at that a bit later um, about as well it feels like it could be a section um, does it have an obvious heading so sponsors has an obvious heading okay so about actually has three different headings um i see these are h3s i think it would be more correct as an h2 otherwise it looks like those three heading level threes are within the h2 that's sponsors which clearly visually they aren't and so you might want to have a um, screen screen reader only h2 right at the start of this and then have the three h3s underneath um, it's okay to have uh, headings that are only for screen reader users if you think it makes it simpler for them to navigate the page um, although it's not something to do as a baseline but just as a way to help the navigation otherwise make these free h2s then some pictures might be good to look at the alt text for these so takeaways Okay, so similarly here, there are some um, visually pleasing icons um, that I think you'd say are not relevant to understanding the content. Um, you'd say they are decorative, um, so I wouldn't have any alt text for these. No, no one cares that it's uh, <laughs> gear and leaves unless uh, you know you care about the actual depiction of the symbol um, this looks very much like a decoration that shouldn't have alt text for it topics a list of topics that looks great in numbers two days 20 talks that all looks great as well I'm a bit surprised these aren't wrapped in any kind of p tag or ul or something like this i'm um, not quite sure whether it will make any difference for any screen reader but yeah just something i'm a bit surprised by photos so this is probably something as well where i might want to add a heading here for screen readers only so they can move straight to this but considering the page is so short not sure whether that's required or not. Queue for book signing. Which one is the queue for book signing? Workshop attendees, speaker and attendees. Um, I can't really tell which is which, which probably is uh, is not a good sign. Um, so left to right, I probably for this have alt text saying. Um, conference talk with speaker on stage and the audience um, maybe describing the room slightly um, maybe speaker on stage in the in the in the foreground and the audience in the background sitting in the background maybe something like this try, try for something short but still that describes kind of what the contents of the image are that are that is relevant in this context um, this middle image for the alt text hmm. if it's someone you that you can recognize as an attendee of the conference I'll probably give their name in the alt text if not I might just say um, a speaker uh, going through their talk uh, maybe mention that you can clearly see that they have a, a book called high performance Python on the speaker stand maybe describe the posture if you think it's interesting and just keep it don't keep don't make it too long either a uh, third image probably something about uh, attendees are joining the next talk or 
maybe something more maybe something more descriptive are attendees climbing the stairs in our conference venue something like this um, you want to be careful not to not to um, add information in the alt text that isn't strictly in the picture you want to describe what the picture contains rather than what you know of the situation in the picture that might not be there so when i say going to a next session that's, that's probably not something you'd want to add next section um this looks like something that could be wrapped in the section tag as well and with an area label pointing at the h2 for that section just so that label is consistently and so people can jump straight to it h2 h3 that looks great by tickets still a bit odd to have an href without any link in it but we'll see what the effects of that might be speaker sharing your knowledge okay that one has an href become a speaker that's perfect sponsor become a sponsor that's all right next one looks great as well oh more photos more photos okay something in the classroom or workshop potentially contact something about our queuing for a book, I assume, and something about attendees and a speaker doing a lecture in an auditorium. Robert giving opening speech, speaker Ian Oswald. Ah, so it does look like this might be swapped the other way around, um, which is which. Yeah, so it looks like the alt text and the images don't match anymore. Uh, Robert giving opening speech. I wouldn't be surprised if this was either this right hand image here or that might be Robert there. In which case, this, this would be pretty okay, like concise alt text in either way. It's just not on the correct image, which is obviously quite problematic. Speaker Ian Oswald. So maybe this is Ian Oswald up there. Um, this is quite good, maybe a bit too concise. Maybe try something like a speaker Ian Oswald giving his talk on stage or giving a talk on stage. People climbing stairs. So yeah, this, this would be for this uh, uh, picture to the right there, um, I would say. This is again very concise. I'd probably make it uh, three to five words longer. Something like tweet, tweet sized. And then the footer. So there are p tags here. Um, not quite sure why this is h5. So we'd be jumping straight from an h3 from the previous section into an h5 here you don't want to be jumping levels like this and you don't want your your headings to be associated with the wrong um, section so these would again either be h2s those three or you'd add a reader only h2 that says something like footer or about maybe and then have three h3s within it uh, you want the document outline to be um, not be skipping any level and you want sub subsections to be contained within the right parent section. And it would be interesting to see how they've done those social share links right there. Past events, work in progress. Links, newsletter. YouTube icon, LinkedIn icon. Yeah, so none of these should say icon because um, you're not linking to the icon, you're linking to your YouTube channel, I assume. So it should say either YouTube channel or YouTube only. That would be something that people understand just by the context of the page. Um, just LinkedIn, just Twitter, just Facebook. Um, or you could have this be more, somewhat more action-based, like share, um, connect on Facebook, connect on Twitter and so on. That would also be okay. And then the copyrights, that looks completely fine. 
Um, so let's try this with some automation next. So I'll try my trusty Accessibility Insights extension. Automated checks. Okay, there are a few errors. Um, this looks like pretty typical contrast errors. Um, those buttons look like they have somewhat of a disabled state. Same here, even though this looks seems to be clickable. So even if it's disabled, it should still be um, meeting the contrast requirements. Contrast requirements are lower for disabled um, elements, but really I'd encourage to try and meet um, the normal contrast requirements anyway. And um, yeah, it's not quite clear to me what's the point of having so many disabled things on the page. Um, it might just be confusing for people that have buttons that do nothing. Um, and there's just no clear indication of what you might do to make these enabled again or why they are disabled. I assume it might just be because the conference is over, but in this case, um, I just, just keep these going to nowhere or going to a message that says, sorry, the conference is over or remove the controls rather than having them there as placeholders, which is a bit confusing. Mm. Yes, yeah, so these all seem to be contrast issues. Mm, this might just be um, false positive because I can't really see what the contrast issue might be here. Uh, let's try another test. Let's try landmarks. So we have a navigation landmark and I believe we have footer. Um, in this case, since your whole site is a single page, I think it would be quite nice to focus on breaking it down into landmarks a bit more just so that people it's quite a long page so for people to have a screen screen readers to navigate through it much more easily you already use headings which serve that purpose but landmarks are just another way to navigate pages um, so in this case i think i would have this be the um, uh, a header element and the banner of landmark just so that because it does feel like a more like a banner or header even though it contains a navigation as well and probably only have Maybe those three links right right there, or maybe those three links plus the two buttons be the navigation landmark within the header. Then the rest is obviously all the, the main landmark. Um, good to have it there so you can skip past the, um, the banner, for example. And then that's a pretty good footer landmark at the bottom, ex except you'd also want the copyright notice to be within it. Uh, this might not be within it because of the um, unclosed footer tag issue. So that's why um, in, in an example of why it matters to have valid HTML. Um, got our contrast checks again for things that might not be found via automation only. Python Anywhere logo is a bit on the low side. Um, this right side of the Oxylabs logo is also a bit on the low side. So just something to keep in mind here is that uh, when you can't perceive colors, all of those buttons look the same. So just thinking, thinking whether it's worth communicating any kind of hierarchy differently. Okay, so this is because one, one is disabled, the other so others aren't. Um, this is probably okay. Actually, you can spot here as well that the schedule button doesn't really stand out as much compared to the nav bar. I think this is okay because just with the placement of a label schedule, you can still s tell that there is a button there. Um, but if it's quite an important button for your um, site, you probably might you might want to make it even more obvious than just the positioning. Um, maybe with a, a border that's thicker around the edges, or just a different background that contrasts better against the surrounding blue. Honestly, ev yeah, even without the uh, my, my sw screen switched to grayscale. This feels like it's a bit low on the contrast side. Uh, we might try that with a color picker. So same all the way here to the bottom, the PyCon.lt link. Um, there is no other indication than the color to tell that this is a link. And in terms of contrast compared to the surrounding text, uh, it probably doesn't doesn't meet um, make make for enough contrast. Um, so I'd suggest if you have links within text like this, always have them underlined rather than just change the color. 
because it can be very hard otherwise to tell what is and isn't a link. Just think, for example, if the word support right there was, was a link, could you even tell if you didn't have, if you couldn't perceive colors, like which bits of this is a link? Sometimes you can tell with, just with the language of the, of the text, but it's good to have more cues that don't rely on color. Headings. H1, yeah, that's not a good idea. Probably want this to be the H1. H2, H3, H3. Yeah, that, that's, that's quite good. It just skips a few levels here and there, but otherwise this is quite a good structure, which mean, means people will be able to navigate the site quite easily. They just will be left to wonder sometimes within which section a specific thing fits. So for example, here it looks it's like- It's 17 hours. Takeaways is under sponsors. So people might just decide to skip that because of it. Um, one thing I haven't addressed yet is just that it looks like this slides image is just this whole thing right there. Um, you would want to make sure this is all quite critical information, the dates, uh, the, ven the, the location and the name of the event. You want to make sure that there is proper text for all of these. Um, yeah, it looks like it's one big image and same for the, the keystone partner. So at the very least, this should have an alt text that says May 14, 16. Or maybe PyCon LT 2021, May 14, 16, Vilnius, Lithuania, Keystone Partner, Oxylabs. That would be, that would already be good enough, I presume. Uh, all of this at the top is very much decorative in nature, it doesn't need to be described. Um, let's see if I could have a few more checks about the document outline that might be helpful in this specific case. I don't have them in this browser, so we'll just leave it there for now. Uh, H123, where are you? Okay, here it is. Let's just try H123 briefly. Yeah, so this will tell you which um, outline issues there might be and what the outline looks like for screen reader user. So obviously here there is an, a heading level skipped. That's why it complains right there. Um, and yeah, it does look like you have much more under sponsors than you actually do on the site. It's worth knowing about those little tools. Um, okay, what's the next on my list? So automated checks we have done. Oh, tab stops is what I'm meant to be doing next. Tab stops is a way to visualize the path that you take through the page, navigating with the keyboard. Okay. Um, usually the logo or logo type of the site is quite a good place to start. But in this case, since it's a single page, I don't really see much value in having this in the um, tab path or just having this be a clickable element. I'll probably jump straight to buy tickets as the first thing or have a skip link to go straight to the content of the page. Uh, home about participate. I assume there might still be a case to have a home link just people just because people might not realize that it's all a single page. Um, but yeah, I want to click on that to see what happens. Become a sponsor. Um, I thought this was disabled with the styles. Looks like it isn't. Buy a ticket. I think that was meant to be disabled as well. So it's a bit surprised that I can, a bit surprised I can, I can tap to this. Um, The focus style for those buttons is a bit, um, I think it could be more apparent for sure. See these buttons at the very bottom, they seem to have the default browser focus style and that's much more visible than the one on the other buttons. All right. That's quite okay. I just want to make sure that the disabled buttons are unreachable or just aren't there at all on the page, basically. Color contrast, we have checked already. Mobile support, let's take a look. So, for a conference website, I assume it's quite critical to have good mobile support. So if I was testing this professionally, 
I would be testing this on a real mobile device um, with touch support and a screen reader on mo my mobile device as well as on desktop. Um, in this case, I just want to make the recording simpler for myself, so I'll just test it in Chrome, but really this should be tested properly on um, a device with an actual touch screen. Okay, so no overflow, so that's quite good. I might push it a bit more and go for a slightly smaller screen. I just made it 100% so it's easier to follow along. And swap those panels around. I feel like the Python Anywhere logo got very small and uh, May 14, 16, the, 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 the info that's on the image basically is now a bit too small for my liking. Might look, want to look at this this spacing a bit. It's not like it's um, going to prevent anyone from understanding the info, but it just makes the page more readable if there is better spacing between different uh, parts of the content. Hmm, so none of the images are there on the mobile version. Um, I assume that's okay. It's definitely a choice, but I don't really see a problem with that. Links, newsletter. Yeah, that's that's quite quite good. Um, one thing I, I noticed though as I'm testing this is that the animation in the main banner area just keeps on um, looping. Um, Animations like these, if they if they are ongoing, you do need a way for users to be able to disable them if they last longer than, I believe the cutoff point might be three seconds. Um, or just don't make them autoplay at all. Um, in, in this case, this is decorative, so I could understand having it be autoplay, but just keep it shorter and um, stop it looping after one or two iterations basically uh, because this can be quite distracting um, particularly if you have some kind of attention deficit disorder you might be trying to read through the the headings of the page uh, the dates and so on and just be distracted by the ongoing animation um, okay time to try this art with a more proper screen reader. So I'll be switching over to Safari. I have it opened already. Just a second. All right, Safari, here we come. voiceover on Safari. So I've just started Safari. You should be able to hear it uh, announcing the text on the page. And you should also be able to see in the lower left um, the output, the text output of the text to speech. And you'll also see this uh, screen called the rotor. Links menu. Which will show us different ways to navigate through the page. Okay, uh, let's look through ways to navigate the page with the rotor to start with. Yes, yeah, so this I probably would remove because you can see the alt text of the image here and you can see it's not really that helpful. Um, the home link to the to the right is uh, plenty enough just as a reminder that you're on the single page of the site, that's the home. And again, make this area current equals page. About, that's pretty good. Um, Le visited, these. link, visited, link, buy ticket. All of these look fine, except basically for the ones that have uh, that are coming from alt text, like the YouTube, LinkedIn, and so on um, links. Just uh, worth, worth a mention as well. Um, link, know, link, link, the, uh, newsletter, text, link, image, YouTube icon. Um, the case of the names in the alt text doesn't matter, but um, well, first off, it gets displayed in a screen like this, and um, not all screen readers. Reserves are completely blind. And uh, second, if the image fails to load, 
the alt text also gets displayed. So I think it's always worth just trying to have the correct case for nouns like this, uh, even in alt text or area labels. Headings menu. Heading level one, PyCon LT. Yeah, we've reviewed the headings already, so I won't spend a lot of time. On no items in landmarks menu. Navigation. Content information. Landmarks, I've already mentioned which ones I think would be good. Window spots, better. links menu. Um, Window, no, I, la, webs, landmarks menu. This is taking quite a while to load. I wonder if this is this animation on the page that's. Um, Escape button. You are currently in a voiceover. Voiceover off. Because it's a bit unusual for my computer to be that slow just with uh, navigating a page like this, even with. Um, voiceover on Safari. PyCon Lithuania 2021 vertical line pipe. All right, let's navigate, let's navigate it to top to bottom. In PyCon Lithuania 2000, link, image, favicon Python LT, heading level one, PyCon LT. You are currently on a heading level one. Busy, busy. List two items. B busy. Yeah, my computer is really suffering to navigate through this wheel screen reader for some reason. Busy. Buy tickets. Clickable one of two. Busy. Navigation. You are currently on a navigation inside web content. To exit this web area, press control, option, shift, up arrow. Not quite sure how this animation Link, is image. whether it might be shuffling elements through the DOM, but the screen reader has lots of trouble navigating through elements like it normally does. Heading level one, PyCon LT. You are currently on a heading voiceover off. I'll try to switch off my other browser. I really don't have anything else but the screen recording and this open, so there really should be no reason for it to be that slow. But we'll see. Yeah, so this site is currently taking 50% um, of my CPU just to render this page without um, me doing any interaction on it. Uh, I'll move this over briefly just for the sake of uh, making this more apparent. So this is obviously a, a, a real problem, not just for screen reader users, but particularly for them since it does seem to be affecting screen reader navigation much more than uh, uh, keyboard or, or pointer mouse navigation. Uh, this is this page is definitely meant not meant to take up that many resources. Um, might have a look at it in um, Chrome afterwards to see what's going on with this. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely suspect the animation. Just for the sake of my testing, I think I'll, I'll um, actually have to remove this slide because it's just taking up too much resources. Um, obviously there is a real problem here with none of the slides content being visible for screen reader users to start with, but I can't really test the page with this uh, still taking so many resources. Or maybe there is some other JavaScript on the page that consumes resources. I can see that there is a Twitter tracking script, so it might just be, oh, is there a Facebook <laughs> tracking script as well? Um, it might just be these. Unfortunately, I don't have um, any kind of script blocking extensions on this browser because I, yeah, I, d I doubt those scripts are actually already loaded, so I doubt this is making any difference. That's more like it. Yeah, I suspect it was it was this slide. All right. Voice over on Saf in toolbar. Out of tool ver PyCon P Py in PyCon Lithuania two thousand vis heading list two I mean you can already see like by ticket. So it is so really the, the any kind of dumb manipulation that's on a loop like this you can it just kills the screen reader that constantly, constantly have to rebuild the um, 
ICT technology representation of the DOM of the page. Schedule. Buy tickets. Clickable one. You can see for screen users, there is no indication that those links are meant to be disabled. So this is quite um, problematic. Um, when I try to click them, nothing happens, but still they are presented as clickable. Schedule. Clickable two of two. So I really recommend just removing these completely so there is no confusion regardless of whether you're cited or using a browser with a mouse or with a screen reader. End of list. List three items. Visited. Link. Home. Current. Link. About. Two of three. Link. Participate. End of list. End of navigation. Heading level two. Sponsor. Oxylabs logo. Image. Yeah. You are currently on it. Have this say Oxylabs. Prittles logo. Group. Just have this say Prittles. HTTPS colon slash Prittles. HTTPS colon slash slash P-R-E-T-A-L-X dot com slash static slash common slash I-M-G. I'm not quite sure what's up with this. There might be, um some markup issues again end of prittles logo group python anywhere logo image you are currently on visited link become a sponsor you are currently on a link python anywhere heading level three take visited link become a sponsor yeah this, this looks and is clickable but it looks disabled at the same time so no question what's up with this heading level three takeaways icon of gear and leafs as in tools image you are current. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have this. Um, Discovered. This is icon of human and chart of networking image. This is very much uh, decorative. Net game. icon gem image. Technically rich talks. And it just distracts from the actual textual content that is like nice and sharp. Heading level three. Data engineering machine. Heading level three. In numbers. Two days. Twenty talks. Social event networking. You are currently on a queue for book signing image. So yeah, for those images, really, um, maybe a heading for the section that's for screen reader users only, and then um, having the correct alt text for each image. Workshop attendees, speaker and attendees, image. I think these alt texts are, are completely okay, just on, on the very concise end of the spectrum. Um, since the only content in the image, since the only content in the section here, here is the images, I definitely suggest having them be a bit longer and more descriptive. Uh, but yeah, they, they have to be for the correct image. Heading level two, choose your role. You might be thinking like a uh, bit of a drama, like, oh, but if you're blind, who cares which image is what? Heading le Lots of people do use screen readers, even though they have some sight. So it would be very confusing for them if what they see and what they hear doesn't match. Heading level three, for to become part of PyCon LT community. Visited, link. Heading level three, speaker. Share your knowledge, link. Become a speaker. Heading level three. Sponsor. So link. Heading. We are. Link. Become a volunteer. Robert giving opening speech. Image. You are current. Speaker Ian Oswald. Im. People climbing stairs. Im. Content information. You are current. Heading level five. P-Y-C-O-N. Yeah, so this probably should have some heading level two footer. Just to make it easier to navigate to this with headings. And then H3, 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 not H5. PyCon Lithuania is community organized event. PyCon LT takes place in New Orleans. It is not. I'm surprised at how well it announces PyCon LT, but I suppose it's just because of the casing that it can tell what is meant to be announced as what. So. Heading level. Yeah, nice one. For work in progress. Heading level five. Links. Link. Newsletter. Link. Image. YouTube icon. Yeah, so I think for this, what I would do to have the best result possible is set the alt text on the image to empty. So alt equals empty string. And on each link, add an area label that states whatever call to action you might want. So here I would say area label equals uh, view our YouTube channel, for example. Link image. And then this would just be announced as link uh, viewers uh, connect on LinkedIn. Um, and it wouldn't even mention that there is an image, which since the image here is the logo, it's not really that interesting for people to know that it to, for people to know it's a logo. They care more about what the link goes to. Link image, twi link image, Facebook. If you just want to change the alt text to something that matches a bit better, that's okay as well. It's just, I don't think people will even care that there is an image in this case. End of content. Copyright sign 2020 copyright. You are currently link pycon.lt. So you can see here it fails to pronounce it co correctly because of the case, uh, all, all being lowercase. So in this case, 
I think it's somewhat debatable whether it's better for it to um, intonate all of the letters one by one or whether you should have an area label that has Pike and the expected case so it's pronounced more correctly. Link PYCON.LT. Yeah, this is perfectly understand understandable, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Link PY. Voice over off. All right. Um, I think that's it for the accessibility testing. I just want to have a brief look at this performance issue, if I can. I actually never looked at um, Safari's uh, performance troubleshooting tooling. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's <laughs> ah, that looks promising. So there is some timers, there is, there is some painting, lots of compositing, and you can see that this painting and compositing basically takes over one CPU, maximum CPU is at 50%. Um, you don't want that kind of resource to go to something that's completely decorative like this. Um, so that's, yeah, I strongly suggest um, doing this animation in a different way or just having it stop after one loop. Um, since this is all a single image, I suspect the animation is done within the SVG itself, which is very inefficient. Um, yeah, so keyframes animation. Um, I don't think the opacity would be that um, time consuming, I think it probably is the translate that takes up the most resources and um, I think browsers are quite good at doing opacity changes on the GPU in HTML. I don't know whether they have this same kind of optimization path for animations within SVG. Um, yeah, in, in other case, I'd say the the quick fix that would work the best for everyone is just to stop the animation after after maybe one loop um, and also yeah just have as much of this be able available as text content if possible but as an alt text would be better than nothing in the meantime um, yeah that's me I, I hope this testing was helpful and I'll try and submit as many fixes as I can for, for all of those things thank you <laughs>